Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Valenz. Hope you're doing well. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about composition. So what you guys learned today is you learned all of the different parts of a composition. So in a composition, it's the way things are placed on the picture plane, on the paper. And so the main parts of a good composition in art is to use the whole picture plane, so to use the whole paper, to have objects of different sizes. This doesn't mean it has to be the same object, but this means that uh, we want to have objects of different sizes so our eye moves around the paper and it gives the illusion of depth or the illusion of distance in an artwork. Uh, we also want to have overlapping because that helps with the illusion of distance as well. And cropping, cropping also helps as well. It just makes it more dynamic um, and that's how you make a good composition. And so what we're going to be uh, practicing our composition skills with is we are going to be making kind of like a fall pumpkin scene, kind of like a pumpkin patch. I always love this project. And so what I'm gonna do first, let me zoom in, is I'm just gonna go over um, a way of how I draw pumpkins. You might draw pumpkins a little differently, um, but I'm gonna show you a way of you can get like a cool 3D effect with it. Um, but uh, if you already know how to draw a pumpkin, you know, that's okay, but just kind of try it my way. It's always good to try new things. All right, so when I'm drawing a pumpkin, um, or actually when I'm drawing any shape, I kind of like to get the feel of the shape that I'm drawing. So I'm going to kind of draw like kind of like a circular oval pumpkin, you know, kind of a nice and big kind of fat pumpkin. And so what I want to do is um, for the shape that I'm going for, I'm going to imaginary draw it. And so I kind of get the feel of what I'm doing before I put the pencil to the paper. And then very lightly, I just go in and I draw the shape. Oh, sorry, I'm adjusting my camera right now. I draw the shape that I want. And so here we go. I got this kind of oval circular shape going on. And then I offer, just to help me out, I always like to put a little stem on top. If you want to, you can even have that stem kind of overlap, just like that. I'm gonna take the little eraser. And now the stem is on top of the pumpkin. I can go back and erase that a little bit better later, but I'm gonna keep moving on. Let me kind of show you how to get those nice pumpkin ridges. And so what you're gonna do, I like to go from the stem, because that seems to be where the pumpkins get, uh, or where the ridges kind of go is like from the stem. So I'm just going to make these curved lines going towards the bottom. Notice that the curved lines are uh, opposite of each other. So on this side, it's going towards, it's following this line right here. On this side, it's following that line right here. And as we move to make more ridges, go like that, and then with the last ridge, I'm gonna kind of bulge that out. And whoops, that's okay. And that kind of creates more of a 3D effect for the pumpkin than just straight lines. Kind of bulge that one out as well. Awesome, so now we've got our first pumpkin. We wanna do, we're gonna practice more pumpkins because we want objects of different sizes. So we're gonna do different size pumpkins because this is a pumpkin patch. So here we go, we got a kind of like our normal-ish pumpkin and um, so, you know what, I think I want to put a little baby pumpkin right here, right in front, like kind of like a little tiny pumpkin. I'm gonna kind of draw that shape. And so you may be wondering, well, now we have all these lines that don't belong in there. So you're gonna take your eraser and erase the best you can. I'm, oh, pff, I just broke my eraser. Of course I did, that's okay, I'm just gonna grab it. Go like that, and then just do your best. We'll cover this up with some coloring later. I'm gonna make my stem on top of that, just like I did with the other pumpkin. Let me get some of these eraser shavings away. And then, same thing, I'm going to make my curved lines. And now, I have 
a little baby pumpkin kind of by the mama pumpkin right there. And so we kind of have a pumpkin family starting, don't we? All right, so we have mama pumpkin, we have baby pumpkin, and everybody, mostly everybody, has kind of that weird family member, that family member that makes you feel like, oh boy, oh, they're coming over. So I think we're going to make a weird Uncle Jeff pumpkin. And so weird Uncle Jeff pumpkin, he's going to be behind Mama Pumpkin. So weird Uncle Jeff, pumpkins come in all different shapes and sizes. So what I'm going to do, he's going to be one of those kind of long pumpkins right there. He Notice I didn't draw over Mama Pumpkin because he's going to be behind Mama Pumpkin. Same thing. Draw your stem. And then coming down, see I stopped where Mama Pumpkin was because Weird Uncle Jeff is behind Mama Pumpkin. It's kind of like, oh, Mama Pumpkin, what are you making for dinner tonight? There we go. There we go. So we have Weird Uncle Jeff kind of behind a little bit. All right. And so we have, I love our pumpkin family so far. It's looking awesome. Um, so now, if you want, if you want to try this out, now we have Big Papa Daddy Pumpkin. That's going to be, he's going to be in the background. Oh my goodness. He's going to be in the back. And so, uh, all these pumpkins are going to be in front of Big Papa Daddy Pumpkin. So one thing when we're drawing, what we don't want to do is we don't want the bottom. I see kids doing this a lot over my years of teaching that they like to draw the bottom of Big Papa Daddy Pumpkin underneath the other pumpkin family. No, we want to keep this behind. So I'm going to kind of start this. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at Big Papa Daddy Pumpkin. And so Big Papa Daddy Pumpkin, he needs a big, he needs a big stem and he's going to need some big wide lines. Oh, Papa Daddy Pumpkin. He's watching over the whole pumpkin family making sure that they are nice and safe just like that and so now I like how we have our little pumpkin and maybe we have another pumpkin because we want uh, objects going off of the page as well so cr that would be cropping maybe we have kind of like a pumpkin kind of coming out of this corner right here draw the stem and maybe that's like kind of like sister pumpkin who's trying to photobomb the pumpkin picture that we're making. Just like that. I'm going to do a little bit more erasing right there in that area of little baby pumpkin just so I can see those lines a little clearer. All right. Um, at this point, don't draw any like vines or details just yet because we got to... Ooh, we got a, we got some stuff to do. So right now, our pumpkin family is floating in the air, and we know when we're trying to make a comp, a realistic composition that that's not that's that doesn't fly. We need these pumpkins to be sitting on the ground. So I'm actually, I like to just use kind of like a weird zigzag line, try to do some lines in the grass right there. And even to show even more depth, to show more um, overlapping, like where the pumpkins are nestled, even by little baby pumpkin, and mama pumpkin, and weird Uncle Jeff pumpkin, I kind of like to show that the grass is right there. So I'm going to take my eraser and erase the parts that the pumpkin or that the grass overlaps the pumpkins and make that in there and then it shows that it's nesting in the grass I kind of I really kind of want something in this area right here so maybe we have weird cousin Bob weird cousin Bob pumpkin <laughs> I'm not saying that all lawn-shaped pumpkins are weird. They're not. They're beautiful. 
but like in our pumpkin family that's going on right here. All right, so now I want you guys to come up with your own pumpkin composition. Um, and so I would say have at least four, have at least four pumpkins in your composition, but keep in mind using the whole picture plane, keep in mind objects of different size, overlapping and cropping. So keep those in mind. All right, so now that you guys have had some time to practice your pumpkin composition and kind of have that drawn out, now I want to show you um, I think it, what I think is a really neat way to color these pumpkins because we could just color them orange, but we want to show some 3D effect. We want to show some shading and things like that. So I'm going to show you a really cool way of how to get kind of like a glowing effect with the pumpkins because pumpkins, if you look at their ridges, um, you know, where the indents are, they have, uh, they seem to have kind of like a darker shade of orange. And as they come out, um, they have lighter shades of orange or even yellow. I use yellow here. Um, and that kind of gives a really cool 3D effect. So that's what we're going to be doing next. And so when I start out, I, I like to do one pumpkin at a time. Um, it just makes it easier. So right now what I have is a dark orange, but if you don't have a dark orange, um, with a regular orange, um, well actually this is like a reddish orange, but um, when, if you don't have one, you can just uh, press harder with your, um, with your regular orange, or you can even add some brown in the places where I'm about to color. So let me kind of show you how to go about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of, and notice I'm only doing the, the mama pumpkin right now. I'm going around my pencil lines. And after I outline with the red orange, I'm kind of going in and I'm making a little bit of the red orange kind of uh, blending that in a little bit. Blending is when you're going to mix colors and I plan on mixing these colors. So after I outline, I'm putting in a little more red orange or you press down harder with your regular orange just like that. And now I'm even I'm going to even add a little bit more. I'm pressing lighter because blending is kind of mixing two colors together. And so now I have my red orange down. Now I'm going to go in with my regular orange. And I'm going to overlap my red orange. And see how that's looking really nice right there? We get that kind of effect. And as I go towards the center of each section, I'm, I'm pressing lighter to get those lighter oranges. And I'm going to kind of leave the center kind of blank like that. Same thing with the other sections. With the other sections, they might be so skinny that you can only leave a little bit or maybe even not at all. It just depends on your pumpkin's shape. All right. And then with yellow, I'm gonna go in, I kind of overlap that orange that I put down, and then in the center, I finish off with that yellow, and oh, that's looking really nice. Kind of cover color the yellow over everything. Looking really snazzy. Really snazzy. Take my brown. Make a nice brown stem. Not making any vines yet. We haven't we haven't gotten to that part, but we will in just a little bit. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to uh, start to color the entire thing with the uh, with the grass. 
I'm, a, I'm going to be using uh, different types of green, but if you don't have different types of green, you can um, mix them with yellow or other colors or even brown to have kind of like brown in the pumpkin patch. Um, or just like with the blending, you can press lighter with your crayon to get uh, different shades or tints of green in there. So press lighter or darker to get those different kind of uh, grass effects. And also notice when I was coloring, I took my time. We want you to be able to do your own personal best. So make sure that you're trying your hardest because we want it to make it look nice. So like I was saying before, um, I have my uh, cropped pumpkins in the foreground plus a little bit of grass. In our middle ground is kind of like our pumpkin family. And then for the background, you can do lots of lots of different things with the background. Um, in, in order to show the kind of things you like. If you wanted to create some more hills in the background, you can do that. Or like maybe a house off in the distance. It's pretty much up to you. A sunset or maybe a night sky. Um, really anything is the limit. Like um, if I wanted to do a sunset off in the distance with my pumpkins. Well, first of all, I kind of like that idea of having some hills. So maybe I'll have some hills kind of in the back. I'm just kind of sketching those out first. And then maybe for mine, I want a sunset and I'm just going to block this area off for the main part of the sun and then I'm gonna add some colors. So you'll see that happening. All right, so now that that's done, for those of you that are wondering, when are we going to put vines if, Vines, and if I want to put vines? So um, if you want to do vines, I would take a dark, uh, dark green or like a brown crayon, and then I'm just going to press hard, and I'm going to go over it, and then I'm going to create my vines. Maybe I'll have some leaves kind of growing off of the vines. I just like to do this last because then when I'm coloring, I'm not trying to be careful around the vines. So that's something to consider. So I'm just pressing hard right over all of my crayon that I did. And um, you don't have to do it for all the pumpkins if you don't want to. I'm just gonna do it for a couple. And there we go, that's our pumpkin composition, our pumpkin drawing. I think it turned out pretty good. And remember, an artist always signs their work. I'm trying to find a black right now, but you know what, I have this purple. So I'm just gonna put the lens down in the corner right there. So there we go, that's our pumpkin artwork. Thanks for watching.